tonight, I'm with you. First of all, before I go to my main issue, I'm wondering whether if you knock on the president's door, you receive a response. Because about four weeks ago, four or five weeks ago, the Ghana Integrity Initiative knocked on the door of the president. We advised the president that he had public officers who were being paid from the consolidated fund who were not allowed under the constitution to stay in public office and run for political office at the same time. And who, if they were interested in politics, ought to choose between public office and politics and resign their public offices and become politicians full time. And yet, after Jia advised the president, we still have as high profile personalities as the head of the Ghana Investment Promotion Center, Mr. George Abuaji, who is the confirmed NDC candidate for Ahanta West, parliamentary candidate for Ahanta West, still in office. We also have the executive head of the Ghana Tourist Authority, Mr. Julius Debra, still in office, running the Tourist Authority and being the parliamentary candidate for Suhum. Uh, there are countless examples, but these are so high profile. I thought that at least for these, the president ought to hear the knock on the door and call them in and tell them something. But of course, <laughs> when you have a leaderless situation and uh, nothing is happening in the home, then you realize that we have problems. For example, we have been told that free exercise books, 83 million free exercise books have been distributed to basic school students. 5.2 million basic school uh, students. So if you have 5.2 million basic school students and 83 million books, then the assumption is that simple mathematics, every single basic school pupil should have 16 free exercise books. All these have been procured at the cost of, we are told, Ghana cities a hundred million. That's serious money. A hundred million Ghana cities. But as we sit here now, show me one basic school child who has one exercise book and the policy will be vindicated. <laughs> You're welcome to Minority Caucus. Tonight we have very, very important matters to discuss. We are looking at the report of the Public Interest and Accountability Committee on the oil sector. Just as with the gaps we've seen, we have the same problems in the oil sector. You have a very, very important committee, Public Interest and Accountability Committee, which is supposed to provide oversight of the sector and is supposed to have a morally strong, suasive authority on the President's actions in the sector. The first report comes. There are so many issues at stake. And tonight, Nana Kofi Opon Damoa, who is a member of the MPP communications team, is going to expose some of those difficulties. And all of us together will determine whether we are on track or not. Nana. Yes, sir. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Um, good evening to the listeners also out there, watchers and listeners as well. Yeah. I, I'm, I am sure I am going to enjoy this matter because <laughs> I like technical people. <laughs> this is a technical matter, isn't it? So or we can break it down. Yeah, we can. We beyond can. the propaganda that, of course, we expect from the other side. We, we, we can break it down to very simple basics and make all of Ghana understand what the simple and the basic issues are. Mm. First of all, you know, this committee was set up as a result of Act 815, which is the Petroleum Revenues Act. Now, the Petroleum Revenues Act had a section that said that, look, call ordinary people or representatives of ordinary people. Every year after the receipts of oil had come in, they are supposed to look at how the oil revenue is being managed and make recommendations, issue a report telling the entirety of Ghanaians that, look, what the technocrats have said, yes, they have said it. But we, representatives of the ordinary people, this is our position looking at how the facts have been reported to us. And that is how come that report was generated. Okay. Now, in essence, it is supposed to be a very simple, down-to-earth manner in which you and I can assess how our oil revenues are being used. But before I even go there, I think that there are two major points that we need to make. The first is on tolerance and the second is on propaganda. 
I think that when we criticize government or we raise issues, yeah. instead of it being seen as we being noisy and distortive and destructive and all of that, should we rather look at it as an attempt for all of us to contribute to the developmental process in Ghana. President Mills, in his first State of the Nation address, promised all of Ghana that he would take opposing views on board. To quote him, the practice where criticisms are seen as destructive will be eschewed. Today, when you speak of things, Informa, the Informa newspaper of today, described Egbert Fable as noisy Egbert Fable because he raised issues on news files. These are the sort of things that do not encourage tolerance at all. Tolerance, if anybody who understands politics, basic politics and democracy, would also understand the fact that tolerance is very, very key for the practice of democracy. Yes. We have to agree to disagree on certain issues. I may not necessarily agree with your point, but I have to uh, be able to tolerate you. Why is it that in modern day Ghana, every dissenting view is replied with insults? We have to look at that. The second is propaganda. And for this, it's very, very key that we understand this. Dr. Bamiya has said time and over again mm -hmm. that you cannot run the economy with propaganda. Certainly. Interestingly, today, mm -hmm. Mr. Martin Amido, who was the NDC's vice presidential candidate in 2000 and former attorney general under this very government, said something in his press release that you cannot win an election with spins. That is propaganda. Which is propaganda. Two very important people, somebody who has even worked at the highest level in this land, cabinet member, attorney general of the Republic of Ghana, says that you cannot run the economy with spin. It's very important that we look at some of these things because so far as we know, and as Dr. Baumia has rightly and adequately proved, all the current problems that we are seeing in the country Ghana is as a result of propaganda. I use this as my basis because... This report that we are about to go into, mm. as we break it down, you see the propaganda that has been thrown about as a result of this. But don't you realize, or shouldn't it be the case that if it's only about propaganda, then you can't tolerate dissenting views? Because propaganda will collapse if it's subjected to sunlight. Which Essentially, is it's in darkness. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why we continue to hold the view that propaganda is not good for the country. So can we expect them to be tolerant in that sense? Then in that case, they will not be tolerant. They will have and um, puff and edit the informer from the castle and write various papers and abuse and insult and just basically try and swerve the issues. That, you see, and that, those are the challenges. Those, that is the root cause of the current economic crisis that we are facing. Those are the problems that are translating into hardships for the ordinary people. Dr. Bamia has said that, look, you are doing propaganda with economic figures. Now, this, these figures, the propagandized figures, become the basis of economic policy. Mm -hmm. Then the economic policy is based on a false foundation. And so what you see is that it won't match up, and you see difficulty. Today, the exchange rate is giving them up, as Dr. Bamia rightly predicted, that, look, you can lie, but the exchange rate will give you up. This is the crust of, for example... So if you go then into, yes, you were about to go into yeah, the report. For example, going into the report, in mm. September 2011, mm. they established the minister commissioned this committee, that is the Public Interest and Accountability Committee. Yes. In State of the Nation Address 2012, President Mills also said before Parliament, <coughs> proudly, that I have established the Public Interest and Accountability uh, Committee yes. in accordance to Act 815. Okay. Given the impression that the committee has been established and it is working. I'm quoting from the committee's report. And what I'm seeing is on page 5, the forward, an acknowledgement. And I'll read. The committee has had to operate under very difficult conditions since the state has not provided any resources to it since its inception in September 2011. The committee has thus relied on an interim secretariat and funds provided by international organizations. The committee is extremely grateful to the following organizations for their immense contributions to the committee during this difficult formative period. Now, the next statement is very, very telling. One could boldly say 
that without the efforts of the Revenue Watch Institute Africa Regional Office, the committee would have been a stillborn committee. Wow. And this is coming from the committee's report. The president stood before parliament and said, I have established it. Now, the issue here is, by saying, telling parliament that you've established it, you gave an impression that, oh, I put them together, I have set them up, I've yeah. given them the necessary resources, yeah. and so now we just expect them to work. Right. When the committee was being inaugurated by the Minister of Finance, Dr. Kabna Dufo, it was all over the news. Daily Graphic reported it, they put it on all the news networks. But the reality, what we are now beginning to see is that they just called the people, said you are into, you, you've been constituted into a committee. And that was the end of the matter. They didn't see fit to provide them Not funds. a faden. Not a secretariat. Not, not a equipment. No nothing. building. And it is also interesting because for last year alone, we are being told that 666 million accrued from petroleum receipts. Now, here, the question of priorities also come up. If you are receiving 666 million, are we being told that governments did not find it fit to pro provide them with even $100,000 to set up and work? So then government's motives come into question. Is the government interested in accountability? Was it sheer incompetence? Is it oversight? Or do they feel that the committee does not deserve that kind of support? It is interesting to note that on accountability, President Mills in the State of the Nation Address 2009 told the whole of Ghana that he's going to address accountability and transparency using three major initiatives. The first one was a right to information bill. That has not been passed. The second one was the Ghana Broadcasting Law. That has also not been passed. The third one was the propagation of a code of ethics. We are yet to see that as well. So in terms of accountability, the track record of this government is zero. They have not done anything on their own to promote accountability yeah. and transparency. Coming back to this, this was, I'm sure, that it was just a cosmetic dress-up, a window dressing, because the petroleum revenue bill demanded it. And mm. again, let's bear in mind the fact that, you know, what's up? Very interesting things have been, have been said and done. When you look at their green book too, the second green book, they say that you know, they are accountable because they have presented the right to information bill to parliament. That was done because of an IMF conditionality. Mm -hmm. Now interestingly, you see, it's, it's been in parliament for almost three years. The IMF conditionality said the right to information bill must go to parliament. It didn't say parliament must pass it. No. That is how come the bill has been before parliament and it has not been passed. They only took it there so they could get funding from IMF. And now that the funding is coming, end of matter, Yamutu. Until, I'm pretty sure that until another conditionality comes for them to pass the bill, it will remain a bill. It will never become an act. That, that, that feeds into the psyche of, part of, of, of the government, that they do things for window dressing. Because it is part of the act, that you must set up a public interest and accountability committee. Yes, we set it up. As to the work that they are supposed to do, we'll see where they'll get money from. So establish for them means name some people. Thank you. And tell the world that we've named them. And then sit back and watch the oversight function die. And so that you can do what you like. In reality, if this report didn't come out, I'm pretty sure government propagandists would have come to say, blame the Public Interest and Accountability Committee. Mm -hmm. We've set them up, and mm -hmm. so they are supposed to produce a result, and they haven't produced the report, and so it's their fault. That's the psyche. And that's where Pain. the trouble is. Are we going to spin the oil sector even before we've taken off? We've set up a Public Interest Accountability Committee without any establishment support no secretariat no money nothing so in spite of all the revenues coming in from there they have to go back to donors to beg donors to give Ghanaians money to make sure that the government of Ghana is accountable in exploiting revenues from the oil sector cosmetic indeed that was Nana Kofi's very very interesting expression cosmetic establishment of that committee Sometimes uh, one will wonder why there are so many things happening and then you want to go into a technical report. Of course, I'm sure many of you are wondering uh, what's happening in the Supreme Court, what happened with the 
Honorable Jacob Echebilamte and uh, uh, the appearance of victimization as well as indeed government's knee-jerk reaction and it's, it's a life story, it's going on. But we believe and we feel that these are matters which go to the heart of our capacity as a nation to change the way our economy is run. The oil sector gives us a new growth pool that if well managed can act as a catalyst to transform this country. We are afraid the report is out in the open, it's tickled the public imagination, but not enough. And if we're not careful, it may simply disappear, when it indeed is talking about very, very, very important things. We all remember that we never had a flow meter for several months. All were questions that we asked and asked and asked. Ultimately, what was the response? We've replaced the flow meter. That was it as to how measurements were being done, as to who was measuring what, in what quantities, and how much of it was impacting the revenue, we were not told. And that is why tonight, Nana Kofi Opon Damwe's analysis of the Public Interest Accountability Report is so important. Nana, you believe that the financial... Yeah, you know, even, even before you go, you've mentioned some very salient points, and so let's look at it critically. Mm. When you look at um, the the whole setup of the oil and gas industry in Ghana. Mm. The, 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 apart from the fact that the flow meters were spoiled for some months yes. and they had to come out in some form before government actually came, came back to tell us that they had replaced the flow meters. Yes. There's an issue with calibration. Yes. The calibration, you know, there are issues with it. One section is claiming that there has been no calibration by the Ghana Standards Board. Government is trying to window dress it by making some counterclaim. And so at the end of the day, we really do not know if the current flow meters that are working have been calibrated properly by the Ghana Statis, uh, Standards Board. And this is interesting because, you see, when you're buying petrol, you need to know that what is reading is actually right. Yeah. So we are, you know, various measures have been put in place. Now, on Ghana's oil rig, where all of this is being done, there are issues about calibration. So we and do not FPS know. So the FPS so Kwame We do not know if what is being reported is true or not. There are issues with the calibration. Again, when it comes to the payment of taxes and all of that, what happens is that we have no way of measuring exactly what is being taken from the ground. At the end of the day, you have to listen to a report from SEBS and um, officials on the FPSO, and that will be given to the Ghana Revenue Authority you know, before we can calculate. So we are virtually relying on the word of mouth of individuals as to how much oil we are taking. This is interesting because that... Originally, there was supposed to be some sort of electronic seals mm -hmm. that were to be attached to the drilling equipment. Okay. Tala Oil came out with an explanation that the FPSO was not designed with the electronic seals in mind. And so that idea has been scrapped. For now, we are just relying on word of mouth that we have extracted one million gallons. And but, that's that. But the operator has a way of determining how much they are extracting. The operator has a way of determining how much. And they, but they we are supposed us. to provide independent calibration. We have nothing of the sort, so we are just waiting. Even in calculation of taxes, mm. what we do is that we use moral suasion. Go and stand there and tell them, okay, we think you are supposed to pay this. And they will tell us, we will pay this. Some sort of a negotiation. Mm. There is no standardized way for us to calculate how much taxes we are supposed to get. But <laughs> those, those are all issues that we should put aside for now. This is just to give um, our viewers an idea of the sort of issues we are having to deal with as an oil producing country. This is just to give us an idea of the sort of issues that we have to deal with. Now, those issues are so many that if we decide to throw all of them out into the public domain at once, we will confuse the issues. So we'll put a lot of them on the back burner for now and then deal with some very simple you know, specifics. Going there as well, it's very interesting that the foundation is being laid mm -hmm. for circumventing the law that deals with the management of petroleum revenues. In what way? The law states clearly that, you know, revenues or receipts from the petroleum of Ghana should be dealt with in this manner. That 70% of it should go towards, directly towards budget. Yes. Now, 21% of it should go into something called the stabilization fund, and then 9% should go into the Heritage Fund. Now, the Heritage Fund and the Stabilization 
fund, make up the future receipts, and then the 70% goes directly into the budget. Now, all we of this, spend. yeah, we spend that in, in the budget. It is interesting to know as well that a caveat was put in there such that that amount can be collateralized. And so with the CDB loan, we've already collateralized. The one which goes into the annual budget. The one that goes into the annual budget has already been collateralized. Okay. So <laughs> we spent that money. So, so what it means is that the money, the 70% that goes into the annual budget can yeah. be used to borrow money ahead. Ahead of time. Of itself. Yes. And, we and have with the CDB loan, we have done that. We have Chinese done that. To borrow the Chinese loan. Mm. It's interesting that, you know, estimates we have seen that we've come across is that for the next 20 years, we have, you know, sort of sold our oil in advance, in a way, to the Chinese for $85 a barrel. Current prices are around $125 a barrel. Okay. So that shortfall yeah. is a loss that Ghana is making. Mm. Now, what happened is that last year, to calculate the amount of money that each of these sections is supposed to receive. That is 70% directly towards the budget, 21% towards stabilization fund, and 9% towards heritage fund. Mm. They had to come up with estimates. Yes. What happened is that government overestimated how much it was going to get. And then took the money that is supposed to go towards the budget, the budget first. So what we then later on realized is that the amount of money that was supposed to go towards the budget was actually 79% instead of 70% of total receipts. In other words, if the government estimates ahead of time that I am going to make 100 million, therefore 70 million is supposed to go into the budget. So government receives 90 million and then takes out 70 million yeah. of the 90 million Thank you and puts much. it into the budget. Thank you very much. And then much. it has only 20 million left. Thank and then it turns much. out that government doesn't make 100 million. Thank it makes only much. 90 million. Thank so you very much. It shortchanges the Heritage Fund, fund and, and the, the Stabilization, stabilization fund. fund. Now it is interesting because the Heritage Fund and the Stabilization Fund, those are future receipts. Mm -hmm. Stabilization Fund is only for, for you know, supporting the economy in terms of dire circumstances. Yeah. And so the let's say savings. Fund, yeah. And the heritage fund... 30% fund, savings. 30% savings. But 9%, yeah. that 9% that cannot be touched hmm. until all our oil is gone. Okay. That 9% cannot be touched. Okay. So those are the savings components of the oil revenue. Yeah. That side, the savings is being eaten into. By the deliberate overestimation. By the deliberate overestimation. It's being eaten into. Now that's where the problem is because... This was done in the first year, and the committee is raising a very pertinent issue that, look, if we allow this thing to happen, mm. what is going to happen is that in the long run, everybody is going to use the same route because this has become precedent. The overestimated. The overestimated, you call it benchmark revenues. The estimations are called benchmark revenues. So we, the committee is concerned about this practice. Interestingly, in the calculation of this benchmark revenue, government was supposed to employ an expert, a consultant. Mm. That was not done. So how was the benchmark revenue calculated? Those are issues that have been raised in this report. Okay. How the calculation, the estimation was done. Mm. And it is interesting because we are breaking the very law that we set to regulate the oil industry. Mm. Another point that is worth mentioning is that monies are not being accounted for. I repeat it. Monies from the oil sector. Monies from the oil sector are not being accounted for. Mm -hmm. There is a section of the revenue that is known as surface rentals. Now, you see, our oil is, on, is below the sea. Mm -hmm. So, you set the FPSO and all of that is atop of the water. Yeah. Because the FPSO is there, nobody can use that section because the FPSO is occupying it. Yeah. So we are charging them rent for the for sea that, that area they are sitting on. That they are sitting the on area that they are doing the digging. To mine the oil and gas. Uh -huh. That area, the rent has not been accounted for. Interesting. But it was charged. It's been charged, it's been but charged, not accounted for. But not accounted for. Who received it? That's an issue. And I'm going to read exactly what the report says. And this is on page 12, paragraph 1, section 4.2.5. Mm. Not all payments expected to go into the Ghana Petroleum Holding Fund were reported on. 
Act 815 covers all oil receipts and Section 6 of Act 815 lists surface rentals explicitly. The surface rentals were paid into the government of Ghana non-tax revenue account in 2011 and not accounted for in the petroleum holding fund, nor were payments from the salt pond field included. Oh, I see. Now, so you see, interestingly, this money is supposed to go into the petroleum holding fund. It didn't go there. It went into some other account, and no accounting was made for it <laughs> in the petroleum holding fund. Again, it is very interesting to know that, you know, at, in, in 2011, at least, it was added to the estimates. Yes. In 2012, it has not been added to the estimate at all. <laughs> Another typical situation of Nasikado. And I would yeah. want to read. <laughs> I would want to read. Yeah. The committee, and I'm read, what I'm reading is coming from um, the same section, page 12 yeah. of the report. Yeah. The committee also found that the projection for revenues during 2012 does not include expected revenues from surface rentals. And that can also be found on page 38, paragraph 1. So in 2008, it was added to projected revenues and not accounted... 2011, sorry. Added to projected revenues and not accounted for. Mm -hmm. As for 2012, it has not, not even, even been added, been at, added all. at all. <laughs> this, is, this is the kind of propagandist creative accounting that Dr. Maumia raises. He's, he's told us all that this government has borrowed more money than any other government ever. They are not able to tell us exactly what has happened to the money. This is the same government which keeps telling us that it has paid arrears in trillions of cities and is never able to confirm how much exactly those arrears were. And now we are being confronted apparently with estimates in diverse forms in different years as well as payments in diverse forms potentially a different year. Yeah, looking at the Public Interest Accountability Committee report on the oil sector with me, Nanako Fiopon Damua, who is a member of the MPP uh, communications team. Uh, just before we went for the break, we were asking the question that everybody seems to be asking the NDC government. Now, Sikano Ewahin. Remember Nanado asked that question, they still haven't answered it yet. Nana. Yes. Where are we with, with all this, the money and now, the... Interestingly, <laughs> I, interestingly, all that has been said, mm -hmm. there's one very critical thing that we all have to pay attention to. And for this, again, I would want to go back to the report and read. Mm -hmm. On page 21 of the report, this is what it says. The Public Interest and Accountability Committee considered the utilization of the funds transferred to the annual budget funding amount in 2011. Mm -hmm. However... The committee was unable during the period to carry out a verification exercise to establish the existence of the assets which various expenditures that were reported or supposed to have been acquired. Long and short of this is that what happens is the monies were given to various agencies. They were supposed to account for it. The agencies would just bring a paper. We use the money for A, B, C, D, and E. Assuming we bought a car, mm. we rented a house, mm. and we flew 10 officials to London. Mm -hmm. There has been no verification that the car has actually been bought, the house has actually been rented, and it was actually 10 and not 6 officials that flew to London. So what we have is just an increment on the annual Auditor General's report of missing receipts, monies that go into all sorts of funny things, and then you come back and say, we have a deficit of so much. Auditor General's report for 2010 states that the biggest problem in Ghana in terms of accounting is, I mean, 54.7% of it comes from mishandling of cash. Mm -hmm. And that is what we are finding here. Monies have been given out to state agencies, we have set up this body to actually ensure that state agencies are accountable mm. for the monies that have been given them. And the state refuses to resource the state agency such that what happens is that anybody gets up 
and presents a list. I use the money for A, B, C, and no verification whatsoever. So, so let's get it very clearly. What we have is that assuming we produce $600 million of oil, 70% of it goes into the budget, it may simply disappear like a sieve. Thank like you. water into a sieve. Thank you. Because accountability for the use of those monies depends on what the finance minister says in the budget. Yes. And depends on what is reported by the Auditor General well after the money has been spent. Thank you. And so in between, we are just dumping all this money in there with no hope of using it effectively to transform anything. There's no hope whatsoever. And the argument can be made. Hmm. You know, propagandists have tried to put out the argument that, oh, we have various state institutions and their inside accountability and auditing sessions. But the issue is, if that's the case, then why are we wasting money setting up additional accountability, you know, organizations? Yeah. Then there's no need. But in the wisdom of our lawmakers, we spent money on Parliament and Parliament looked into our revenues and said, no, we need to establish the PIAC. Yeah. The PIAC has been established and we... They are telling us plain that anybody can get that. It's like, yeah, I can come today and tell you that I'm buying a car for one billion. So give me one billion CDs. You give me the one billion CDs. I come back and I come and tell you I bought a car. As to whether the car I bought was a Toyota Corolla 2010 edition or it was a Toyota Corolla 1954 edition, mm. you have no means of checking. All you know is you've given me money and I say I use the money to buy a car. One billion, and that's it. Is that the same way GMPC is spending a share of the money? GMPC that is yet to, to account for the monies allocated to it under the law. No auditing, as of now, as we speak, no auditing has been done for the monies that were given to GMPC. It claims that, you know, it will account for it. But it is interesting to know that GMPC did not give a timeline for accounting. For accounting. But is GMPC subject to the Auditor General? Yes, it is subject to the Auditor General. But, you know, the technicalities of all of and again, it gets confusing because what we are beginning to see is that there are a couple of bodies that are supposed to work in a streamlined fashion. Mm -hmm. Because certain breaches are beginning to occur, yeah. the process is truncated along the line. Individuals come up to give assurances, which never happen. Okay. That the Minister of Agriculture was given an assurance that there will be no food shortage. When the new patriotic the party is waiting for the Ghana Statistical Service to invite it to a meeting that was promised somewhere in 2011. To date. These are the sorts of things that we are talking about. And when issues of this sort come up, individuals try to put out personal reputations. And in any case, those reputations are being questioned. There are serious questions about those reputations, but that is an issue for another day. Mm. Uh, because there are a lot of issues to deal with. Uh, I'm finding it difficult to even decide what issues to put out there in the... Ghana, there is Ghana so Gas much was giving some money. Ghana Gas was giving 20 million. Mm. Ghana Gas was giving 20 million. Mm. Now the issue is that there are problems... 20 million Ghana cities or 20, 20 million, million Ghana cities. Mm. The problems concerning the establishment of Ghana Gas as to whether it has been backed by law or not. There are various views that are coming up concerning the status of Ghana Gas. Dankwa Institute has been known to raise, it's on record, the Dankwa Institute has raised serious questions about the establishment of Ghana Gas. Mm. The government of Ghana has, you know, replied with an alternative position, and we are yet to reach a solid conclusion on that. But, despite the questions on Ghana Gas, it was given 20 million. Mm -hmm. This goal takes me back to my original position, that the establishment of the PIAC was cosmetic. Because even with an entity that has questions surrounding its legality, it was given 20 million. But an entity that was established by law, not a fadden. I assume this is Saddam. <laughs> <laughs> no, the PIAC itself oh, yeah, was yeah, not yeah, given yeah. a fadden. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the institution that is supposed to report on, you know, revenues. Mm. They were not resourced in any manner. They were just called together and put... A, Go out there and do your own thing. So they had to go from one international organization to the other, begging for space, begging to use their machines. And even the report itself had to be published using external funds, funds that were provided by an international organization, the GIZ. 
They gave them money to do this. It was on the day of the release of the report that we are told government provided some minor funds to help organize the particular event to launch the report. So they could come and give a speech. So they could come and give a speech. And immediately after that, we had government propagandists all over the radio stations. Oh, yes, the government is doing its job. We are accountable. The PIAC has released its report. And that's very interesting. Mm. Again, we go back to the basis. And I am on a personal campaign mm. against propaganda. I'm saying that, look, if the NBC takes Ghanaians seriously, mm. they should scrap mm. the rewarding of propaganda. They are in attempting to institutionalize propaganda into the body politic of Ghana. Why am I saying this? Across the various strata of political organization within the NDC, they have a position, propaganda secretary. Mm -hmm. Why? Why? And it's interesting that they have a propaganda secretary. They turn around and accuse opponents of practicing propaganda. <laughs> I have never ceased to be amazed <laughs> by that. That is a classic. That the is NDC. a very classic. Look, the, la the latest one was Mr. Samuel Jordanati on news, uh, news file on Saturday, mm. accusing, you know, Mr. Nana Komia and um, Egbe Fable of being NPP propagandists. <laughs> on Friday morning, Metro TV, uh, Mr. Samuel Okujeta Blackwa was also on accusing NPP of practicing propaganda. Mm. It is very interesting the way they do it because you have a, a full-blown propaganda secretary. <laughs> According to their propaganda secretary, mm. on September 14, 2011, he conducted an interview with Kojo Pankuma of Joy FM, mm. and he stated that they are setting up a full-blown propaganda secretary. And knowing very well that propaganda is about knowing lies. Knowing very well that propaganda is about Repeating lies. Repeating lies. Repeating often, lies and over and over again. And At often, best, it is the twisting of facts. Plain blatant lies. You have set up a full-blown propaganda secretariat, the result of which we are seeing that things like the PIAC report, no matter how damning it is, is being made to look as if it is a plus to the government. And then you turn around and accuse your opponents of practicing propaganda. No political party, no other political party except the NBC has a propaganda secretary in Ghana currently. Not even the CPP. <laughs> All political parties in Ghana are saying that, look, communications is the way to go. It is time that you tell the people what you have to tell them. Give them the facts and then you listen to their feedback. NBC is still saying, we believe in propaganda. We are going to use propaganda. And then they turn around and point accusing fingers so at our what is opponent. the key value of this committee? This committee it's is... going to be reporting regularly. Yes, and then it's supposed to engage the public, mm -hmm. you know, in discussions on its reports. So this is some sort of an advice mm -hmm. to the government. Now, the key value of the thing is that it is a collection, a sampling of the Ghanaian population. Mm -hmm. These are not necessarily technocrats. There are people that have been picked from various agencies and bodies that are seen or are deemed to be representative of the Ghanaian population. So in other words, th this report is the view of the Ghanaian people okay. to so the ideally, president. Ideally, for it to have value, uh, Ghanaian people must engage the report. The Ghanaian people must engage the report, yes, mm. but the president or the executive mm. must pay attention to this report as the views of the Ghanaian population. Very well. This is what Ghana as a whole is deemed to be telling the president. So that is what the PIAC report is. It is your scorecard on the performance of the government within the oil sector. A scorecard that we all, including you, must insist the government takes notice of because it's our advice to the government on how it's managing the oil sector on our behalf. Now, Nana, no, no. yeah. is there anything that uh, well, like, as I've, caught I've, in the cracks? As I've made a point, there are a lot of issues, but I would want to say one last thing. That is that the biggest cause of corruption in the oil and gas industry all over the world is reporting in multiple currencies. Mm. In Ghana, we've also taken that practice. Mm. In the budget, we report on the receipts from the oil and gas in CDs. And then when it gets to the Bank of Ghana, we report it in dollars. And nobody bothers to tell us what the exchange rate is. Mm -hmm. So what happens is, you know, today, for instance... It is on the line. Hello? Hello? 
Can you hear me? Hello? It is. Your line, your line is gone bad. You have to try and call again. Okay. Mm. So today, for instance, the, the currency rate stands at 1.9 there about. Mm -hmm. So if in reporting, if somebody decides to say that it's 1.6, and because we are not being told what the exchange rate is, we cannot do the conversion. Mm -hmm. What happens is that by the end of the year, some 6.6 .6 million dollars would have gone somewhere. That is using revenues from last year because last year we received six point six hundred and sixty six million. Bismarck. Hello, good evening. Yes, sir, Bismarck. Uh, I'm highly appreciative to whatever you people are doing there. Uh, the little advice I want to give is that please this is very educative. I know most of us do not we don't pay attention to most of these programs especially around the same time. So I want to suggest that look for an appropriate day, look for a good forum, educate Ghanaians on some of these issues. Please, our monies are being wasted on day in, day out. Especially, you can hear what is going on. Please, we are, we are highly, in fact, I would say I'm highly appreciative. Please, I beg you, I beg you, in the name of God, Please, let Ghanaians get this message down. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello? Good evening. Yes, sir. This is Big Dreamer calling from Aroa. That's right. Yeah. Um, I want to say hello to Honorable Professor Amiyo <laughs> Kunzi. Are you the, here? Our dynamic MP for this man, North. Mm -hmm. And we are assuring him we are going to vote for him once again. Because he's doing a great job. Uh, there is one thing that I want to ask you if you could do it for us. Mm. The state of our economy has been published by Gabi Asaro Ochredakon. I saw it the last time when Anna was going to North at Professor Amir Kufi's house. Mm. So we are urging uh, uh, Gabi to bring those books out so that those of us who can read, we get them so that we will get to know the propaganda that this government is doing with our economy. And the response to this government is not is never transparent and will never be transparent. I want the president and his cabinet to meet on the economy, but not on Jake issue. There are so many pressing issues that Ghanaians want to know. And what is what is building all about? You are wasting our resources. What you've entrusted in your hands, you are not making good use of them. Then you come out to tell Ghanaians that we are not interested in the, 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 the whole competent part of jurisdiction, what has been said. You don't believe it. And the whole cabinet can sit on this issue. What Ghanaians we are suffering? And we are saying that this government, come what may, Ghanaians, the youth especially, yes, to vote this government out so that Nana comes in to rescue us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, sir. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening. I'm speaking from Yendi. Yeah. I'm very much appreciative about your, what your, your man is talking about. We, we are ignorant about these things. So I, I want to appeal to you. The second call, so, so the second caller hmm. may mention that you should get another day for it. So I'm appealing to you so that you make it open to everybody okay. so that Ghanaians will know what is happening. Okay. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Now, very interesting uh, 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 variations. Yes. In the the problem is that you know we are accounting for the oil receipts in two currencies mm -hmm. without stating the exchange rate, and so unscrupulous individuals can just use some mechanism yes. and report yes. in the currency exchange and make huge sums of money. In other words, if if you you take it at a certain point, then as the revenues come in in dollar and it depreciates. Hello? Hello, Mr. Yes, Bobby. Sir. Yes, sir. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Um, please, I like the way you're handling the program. And then I'm very interested in it. 
Uh, please, do you think NCP will be, uh, NDC will be ready to hand over power in uh, 7th January 2013 <laughs> when um, we would vote Atamos out? They have no choice. Because the way they have changed or they are trying to take their own law to rule this uh, country, I don't think, because... Uh, I don't understand. I don't understand. So please, let us all add or, um, you know, gather our uh, resources, our strength, and then try to put them out massively. The only thing that we can do, I think, is to use our thumb and then vote them out. Thank so more, 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 more yeah, this thing to your elbow. Uh, Thank you very much. Keep it on. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Mazaudu. Tejiman. Hello. Hello, good evening. Yes, sir. I'm um, from Tachima. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, thank you for the opportunity given. We want to tell NDC people that no propaganda, they should stop propaganda. Ghanaians are going to vote based on manifesto. The manifesto that Atemet tell Ghanaians, and he failed all the manifesto. Uh, look at you are the number one gentleman in this, uh, in this nation, and you have given orders and a chief. Security, you are the, 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 the head of security in, uh, uh, of armed forces in, in, in this nation. You have ordered that two times that they shouldn't pay Wyoming money and they pay Wyoming money. And today, the uh, Court of uh, Judicial has, uh, has, been, uh, has been judged about somebody and, even, and didn't judge in favor of you, the president, and you say you will not agree. Eh? This president has shown Ghana that it is. Oh, it's unfortunate I've lost him. Clearly, <laughs> out there, it's, it's a feeling that the government doesn't respect the law. And the way they are treating this report, they don't respect the law. They don't respect the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court takes a decision, and Cabinet, without averting its mind to very, very important matters, including the corruption that is drowning the nation, has a setting and rails against the Supreme Court. See, all of this stems from a psyche of propaganda. That is what we have to understand. Cabinet from the look of things, from the way they are begin, the issues they are beginning to pander towards, Cabinet sits down and says, okay, let's take this stand and then put a spin on it and project it in a particular manner. So that we present ourselves as the defenders of the property of the Ghanaian Psycho people, whilst the, other, whilst the other, you know, the other side are those who are interested in grabbing state property. Mm -hmm. And that's the agenda they're trying to push. Interestingly, you cannot run a country, you cannot run an economy with propaganda. The judiciary of Ghana have proved time and over again that they are truly independent. The Mo Ibrahim Index gave them one of the highest rankings ever in terms of Africa. They are first. So when you do something like this and you take it to court, the judiciary will look at you and tell you, my brother, go back. This is wrong. And when that happens, the judiciary is insulted from head to toe. I've heard that Mr. Chris Akome is saying that two of the judges of the Supreme Court are now NPP activists. Thank God. <sighs> In any event, interestingly, they talk about morality. There's so many NDC activists. NDC government officials who have when, when it comes to the issue of morality dance. when it comes to the issue of morality mm -hmm. Mr. Martin Amido who was Attorney General yeah. today in his press statements made a very damning statement against President Mills he said he is aware of the fact that the President constituted a section of legal experts and land administrators on this, they have presented their report to him he, President His Excellency John Evans Atta Mills has failed to take a decision on that report that was presented to him. Because they will lose lands that they have. He lacks the moral courage mm. and the moral authority mm -hmm. to take a decision on that report. So that report has been put on his desk and is lying there. And he's rather interested in propaganda. Cabinet has refused to take a decision on a report. An administrative process for which they are being paid. Which covers all Which Ghana. covers all of Ghana. Not even Ghana. Ghana, every land in Ghana. Mm -hmm. Rather, they are interested in going after individuals for political ca capital.
That is the sort of government that we have uh, in this Jake, country. Jake is a very attractive target. He happens to be the chairman of the MPP. Thank you. Which is coming into power in December. Thank you. So <laughs> let us make him look at go. He is the leader of the cabal of land grabbing, yeah. property owning, yeah. you know, semi democratic Forget, individuals. That many, many NDC higher ups. President Ghana. John Evans Atamils himself and the vice president and, and, his the, vice chairman of the, council and the chairman and of the council and of the list of them. All of them are implicated in this. He who goes to equity must go with clean hands. This is the only time I've seen somebody whose hands is meddled in the same soup. His hands are all oil, mm. oily from the same soup. Mm. And he's pointing accusing things. The same thing with the propaganda. You have a propaganda secretariat. And you turn around and Maybe accuse other cool people thing. of propaganda. <laughs> this <laughs> is the government that we have. It's a member of the MPP communications team. But the bottom line is that we really need leadership to focus on the things that matter. The things that matter to this country are how our resources are being husbanded and organized in the interest of the people of Ghana. Is it just being frittered away? Is it being destroyed? Is the government on top of its priorities? Indeed, is the government being led? Is the president there? I'm knocking. Hello, Mr. President, are you there? Hello?